you can draw this iris in Procreate. It's time for You Can Draw This Iris, the sequel. The previous You Can Draw This Iris video was a great success and I have seen so many lovely results on Instagram. I thought it would be a fun idea to make a brown iris this time and use different techniques. Because you know, there are lots of roads that lead to Rome. For this tutorial, of course, we'll be using the brushes that are already in Procreate and I will guide you through every step. So I'm sure that you can create an iris just like this one. First, let's talk about the canvas. It is 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels. If you want to use the same brush sizes as I'm using, then it's important to set your canvas to the same size. And if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using, then you can download the color palette through the link in the description. So let's not delay, let's get started. First of all, we will fill our canvas with a color. We'll do that by going to the layer palette and clicking background color. And we'll pick this bluish gray color. Because you know, the white of the eye, it really isn't exactly white. When you're painting eyes, I would advise you to use a grayish color instead. So we'll use a color like this for our iris as well. Now let's go to our first layer, layer one, and we will use the monoline brush, which you can find under calligraphy. Let's pick this third color, this brown. Let's zoom out just a little bit and let's create a circle. Hold your pen in place to switch to the quick shape tool and hold one finger on your screen to make it snap to a perfect circle. Now let go and fill your circle by dragging in the color. Now we want to make sure that our circle is in the exact center of our canvas. First let's go to the wrench and turn on drawing guide. We'll go to edit drawing guide and make our grid size. Let's turn it all the way up to max. This way we can clearly see the center of our canvas. Let's click done and now we'll go to this arrow, to the move tool. And here you see the option to fit the screen. So we'll fit our circle to the screen. And this way it is automatically centered because it's, well, it's fit to the screen. And now while we have it set to uniform and magnetics, we can pinch our circle and make it slightly smaller. And then click the arrow again to leave this menu. We can apply the same technique to the pupil of the eye. We'll do this on a separate layer, so go to the layer palette, click the plus to make a new layer, and this time we'll take this very dark, almost black color. And let's again make a circle. Hold your pen in place to snap to the quick shape tool, put one finger on your screen to let it snap to that perfect circle. Drag in the color again, to fill it and again go to the move tool and have it fit to screen. And again while you have it set to uniform and magnetics you can pinch in the middle to make your pupil smaller. Let's go for something like this and click the arrow again to leave this menu. When you look at an eye at the iris, you will see that the iris doesn't have a crisp outline like this one. We want a soft transition there. So let's go to the layer with the brown iris on it, click it and then go to the magic wand and use Gaussian Blur. That way we can blur the edges a bit. If you just hold your pen on your screen and swipe to the right, you can adjust the blur percentage. Let's go for 6.3 for example. And let's do the same for our pupil. So we'll go to the pupil layer, that's layer 2. Again, go to the magic wand and click Gaussian Blur. I'll blur this one a bit less. Let's go for 5% and click the magic wand again or whatever to leave that menu. Next, it's time to start adding some detail to our iris, of course, because this, it doesn't look like an iris. So let's make a new layer and we will do this on top of our brown iris base layer. 
Click that layer first and then click plus to make a new layer. And we will set this one to clipping mask. That way, whatever we paint on this clip layer will only show up on that brown iris base layer. And for our brush, we will go to artistic and pick the old beach brush. And let's pick, let's pick this dark brown color first. To make painting an iris a lot easier, we can use the symmetry tool. We'll go to the wrench and to edit drawing guide and then select symmetry. And when you go to options, you can pick radial and then you'll see this like star shape on your canvas. Now we don't want to be bothered by these lines, so you can turn down the opacity of the lines a bit. For example, to around 20%. And you could make it a bit lighter here at the top. You can slide to adjust the color of your grid. I'll make it a bit light. And then click done to continue painting. I have the brush set to 30%. And let's just start adding some rough detail to our iris. And make sure that you move from the center to the outside of the iris, along those lines of that grid. And you can use this dark brown, and you can also switch to that light brown in the color palette. And just make some interesting shapes. And you can also play around with the size of your brush. Make it a bit smaller, for instance, go to 15%. And also play around with the color, switch to that dark one. Until you have a nice base iris texture. I'll switch one more time to the lighter color. And now let's switch to the smudge tool. That's that little finger right here. And let's go and use the brush gouache under painting. I have the opacity set to 70%. And let's set the brush size to 10% for now. And let's smudge everything a little bit, giving it a softer look from the center to the outside or vice versa. But don't go crisscross all over your iris. The outside of the iris is often quite a bit darker than the inside. So let's switch to the airbrush right now, the soft brush under airbrushing, and pick that dark brown color, that fourth color in the color palette. I have the brush size set to 15% and the opacity is at 40%. And now let's darken that outside of that iris. At this point, we can turn off our drawing guide. Go to the wrench, then to canvas, and then switch off the drawing guide. As you can see, while we have the drawing guide turned off, this layer is still assisted. So on this layer, if you paint on it, you will still have that symmetry tool active. But we are going to make a new layer, which is not assisted, so we can paint wherever we like and it won't use that symmetry. We will clip this layer to layer one again, so we'll click the layer, then select clipping mask. And now layer four is also clipped to layer one. We will turn this layer, we will set it to multiply 
So click that end and scroll up to multiply. Now this layer will darken everything underneath it because I would like to add some darker details to our iris now. We'll go to brushes and then to painting and use the gouache brush. I have the color set to that dark brown color. And now let's add some darker lines to our iris. And the reason that I don't have this layer set to assisted and to that symmetry is that we don't want this iris to look like we used the symmetry tool. We want some variation in the iris. I'm just making some lines outward because when you look closely at an iris, you can see these little wrinkles because that's, well, it's like a muscle that contracts and it, it opens up. So you can see these little wrinkles. And just make sure that you go from the center to the outside. Just want some dark, interesting details. And of course you can combine the techniques of this video tutorial with the techniques of the previous You Can Draw This Iris video. There are just so many ways to get the same end result eventually. And you can just find your own favorite techniques in Procreate. And you can play around with the size of the brush, make it a bit bigger, let's say 10%. And add a couple of bigger, darker strokes. And let me switch to 6%. But if you're interested in learning how to paint an entire realistic eye, and I do have a video at Patreon. At Patreon, I share a lot of fully narrated video tutorials, which are more in depth than my YouTube videos. There you will see my painting process from sketch to finish. Let me go smaller again. I'll go to 3%, just some small wrinkles. We can add some wobbly lines. And of course you can look up reference images. I would really encourage you to do that, to look at photos of irises or to look at your own iris and check what kind of textures you see. What kind of interesting shapes do you see in those irises and what colors? Some wobbly lines on the outsides. Just to give it an interesting look. And next I would like to go to the pupil layer. We have that one right here, layer two. And I would like to use the smudge tool and we still have that set to gouache and use it to drag that black to the outside. Because if you look at your pupil, it's not a perfect circle either. You will see those creases between the, well, in that iris muscle, you will see these little creases. So we are going to create those by using the smudge tool. We'll make it pretty small. Let's go to 3% and just Go to the outside, from the center to the outside. And to make it even easier, you could turn on assist on this layer. So click it, turn on drawing assist, and now we have that symmetry turned on for this layer. So then you can get that effect super fast on the entire iris. Just make short strokes to the outside. There, you can get that effect super fast. Now I think that our pupil is a little bit big, so I would like to make it smaller. And we can easily do that by going to that move tool, that arrow, 
and we still have it set to uniform and magnetics and we can just pinch it and make it smaller like that and then just click the arrow again to go out of that menu now we have a bit more iris to play with next i would like to add some lighter effects to the iris i would like to do that on a layer underneath the multiply layer that we just created so we'll go to layer three first and then click plus to make a layer that's between layer three and that multiply layer this layer well we will also use a layer blending mode so click the end and turn it to add this time that will lighten everything underneath it this time we'll use a brush under elements we will use the clouds brush and for our color we will pick this light brown i have the brush set to 40 percent size and the opacity is at a hundred percent now gently go over your iris to add some interesting texture and light you can even switch to that yellow to add even more light don't go overboard though don't add too much but it creates a nice texture on your iris. For even more light effects, we'll make a new layer on top of our multiply layer, the one with the dark, the dark touches. So click that one first, then click plus, and click the layer to set it to clipping mask. Now, whatever we paint on it will only show up on layer one, which all these layers are clipped to. We'll set this layer to add as well, so click the N, scroll down to add, and let's use the flames brush. We'll set our brush to brown to the second color, and we will start adding some lighter details. I have the brush size set to 30%, and let's put the opacity at 80%. And I use very little pressure to gently make these light touches to the iris. Again, making these outward strokes. And if the effect gets too strong for you, you can either lower the opacity of the brush or when you're done, lower the opacity of the entire layer. Again, I'm not using the symmetry tool here to get more variety in our iris. And just go along the entire circle. And of course you can turn around your canvas if that's easier for you. And if you're new to Procreate, if this is one of your first tutorials that you're following, then you might like my Skillshare class as well. I have a Skillshare class that is all about getting started with digital painting in Procreate, in which I explain all the tools in the app. And during the class, we'll also be painting a realistic looking apple. So if you want to get started with digital painting, then that might be a good start. I'll just leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. So I use very, very little pressure when using this brush. And quite some people have asked me what my pressure curve looks like for my Apple Pencil. So let me just show you. If you go to the wrench and then to prefs, you can go to edit pressure curve. And this is what my pressure curve looks like. This doesn't mean that this pressure curve would work for you as well. It really depends on how much pressure you like to put on your pencil. And I use very, very little pressure. So next up, I would like to add even more light details. It's a bit like this is a golden eye, a golden iris. Let's use the gouache brush again for that. So we'll go to painting and use the gouache. And let me make it pretty small. Let's go to 2%. And let's just add some sparkly details. 
Now let me switch to that yellow color in our color palette. As if this iris has some golden specks. To make it look extra interesting. And you can just go wild with your iris. Like I said, look up references or just use your imagination. And you can just go wild with your iris. Like I said, look up references or just use your imagination to make a lovely looking iris. And of course you can use other colors. There are just some basics that you need to know when making an iris, like that soft edge around the iris, those muscles that you see around the pupil, those help to create a more realistic looking iris. And for all the colors, you can really use your imagination, go wild, create something colorful. And of course, don't forget to share your result on Instagram and tag me in the image. So I will be able to find it. And then maybe next time in another You Can Draw This video, I will share your artwork. I like the way this looks. Let's add a reflection to our iris. Because of course, it is hit by light and we will see a reflection on that shiny surface of the eyeball. Let's do it on a new layer. So we'll click layer two first. That's the one with the pupil on it. Click plus to create a new layer. And let's go to the selection tool right here and go for a rectangle. Just create a rectangle that looks something like this and switch to this color right here and drag it into your rectangular selection. Now turn off the selection tool by clicking that S shape ribbon again and then we'll go to the move tool to transform our rectangle. First, let's place it where we want the reflection to be. Drag the screen handle to put it at an angle and let's place it around here. Now we can go to distort and we can turn off magnetics. And let's move these handles towards each other. And we're making something like, it's called a trapezium, right? So these handles are farther apart than these at the bottom. Create a shape that's something like this. Next, we'll move to warp. It's right next to distort here. Click warp and then place your pen or your finger in this square right here and push it towards the outside of your iris. And make it align with that outside, but don't put it bright on top of it. Then we'll go to this square right here and push that upward like this and make it align with that pupil. Now you can click the arrow again to leave this menu. Next, we'll want to fade the effect of this highlight a bit. First of all, we can do that by lowering the opacity of the layer. So click the N and then use the slider and move it to around 75%. But that's not enough to make it look realistic. Let's use a layer mask to fix that. Click the layer, then go to mask right here. Now we have added a mask to this layer. Using a mask enables you to mask parts of the layer that it is attached to. If your layer mask is white, everything of that layer will be shown. It's like the mask is invisible. You will see the entire layer through that mask. But once you start using black or gray, you will start blocking parts of that layer. So let's do that by using the soft brush under airbrushing and have it set to black. I have the brush set to 40% opacity and we'll set the size to 30%. And now you can gently go over that underside to block a part of that layer with the reflection. 
Now let's make the brush a bit smaller. Let's go to 20% and really soften up this edge at the underside. So because the opacity of this brush is low and also set to pen pressure, it won't block the underlying layer entirely. You will still see parts of that reflection. At this point, you can start tweaking your iris a little bit. For instance, when light is hitting the eye right here, it'll pass through and light this part of the iris as well. So let's create that effect by going to layer six again and add another clip layer. So click the plus, click this layer and select clipping mask. And we will use the blending mode screen for this one. So click the N, scroll down to screen. And screen is also a layer that lets you lighten up the layer underneath. We will use the soft brush and let's set it to this brown first. And then gently go over that area to lighten it up a bit. And you can also use a yellow if you want to lighten it up even more. And if you would like to give the colors of your iris a boost, you can also add an overlay layer. Let's see what that looks like. So click the plus, again, use clipping mask, and set this layer to overlay. I really like using overlay, overlay layers or overlay brushes to add a color boost to my paintings. Let's just use this brown color and when you go over the iris, you will see the colors warm up. And also for this effect, you can control it by going to your layer, clicking the O and sliding your opacity slider to make the effect less visible. Finally, we could also use a multiply layer again to darken up that outside of the iris a little bit more. So again, go to your layer palette, click the plus, use clipping mask and set this layer to multiply all the way on top right here. You can use the dark brown color right here, the fourth color in the color palette and go along the outside of the iris to darken it up a bit more. And this way you can tweak your iris. Let's lower the opacity of this layer a bit too. So with these layers, you are in full control. And there you have your brown iris. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm looking forward to seeing your creations. Be sure to share them on Instagram and tag me in the image. If you like this, you can draw this video, then you might want to check out the others as well if you haven't already, or you can just start out with these two videos right here. I will see you next time. <laughs>